Antarctica is a large land mass, about the size of the United States and Mexico combined. While the ice has been here for millions of years, it's grown and shrunk during that time. We're here to study how it has responded to past times of global warming as a clue to understanding how it might respond to future global warming. We're particularly interested in the West Antarctic Ice Sheet because it's often considered to be more susceptible to future retreat. It could contribute about four meters to global sea level rise. The Amundsen Sea, where we are working, currently has some of the fastest changing ice. The Amundsen and the glaciers it contains then are of particular interest to scientists around the world because of this rapid change. We are now back in Punta Arenas, Chile, uh, after seven weeks uh, of expedition to the Amundsen Sea. We returned uh, with more than 1,000 meters of sediment core. We drilled in two different sites, uh, drill sites uh, on the deep water of the Amundsen Sea embayment. We drilled sediments back to the late Miocene, which is roughly six to seven million years. Well, IODP is the, uh, well, right now it's called the uh, International Ocean Discovery Program. Before that, it was called the Integrated Ocean Drilling Program. And before that, it was the Ocean Drilling Program. And before that, it was the Deep Sea Drilling Project. Um, but suffice to say, uh, it's uh, been going on since the late 1960s. It's a program where we obtain cores from the seafloor to look at Earth's history. Joides Resolution currently is the tool, uh, one of the most effective tools for taking cores of the seafloor in many different parts of the world's oceans. It's really hard to get to Antarctica, and that means that there aren't very many drill cores around the Antarctic margin. There isn't a lot of data actually on the continent. There's not a lot of data um, for the ocean, and so every little piece is so important because we can gain so much um, information from a little bit of data to understand the behavior of the whole system. The big things facing us with climate change right now are how fast sea level will change and how warm we will get. So if we can figure out things like how fast this has happened in the past, like on the scale of hundreds of years or thousands of years, um, we can better predict what might happen in the future. But of course, Antarctic expeditions, we need years of planning. I think we started uh, writing the first proposal back in 2012. And you never know in uh, uh, the year the expedition takes place what uh, situation with the sea ice and with icebergs you will encounter. The, uh, the challenge this time was, was the uh, amazing amount of ice that we encountered. Uh, we had to start and stop, start and stop, start and stop. So it really was difficult not to actually do the drilling and coring, but rather to, to get enough time to do the drilling and coring. When the ice starts to come within a certain range of the ship, we have to suspend operations. Although you can have a lot of icebergs, you only really need one iceberg to put you off location. And uh, there were times that we only had maybe uh, eight, 10 icebergs within a 12 mile range. There were times that we had 30 to 40 icebergs within a 12 mile range. So we were sort of a, a berg magnet. <laughs> But to see the size of the icebergs, the shape, the color, it's just, it's amazing. The drill cores we bring back are recording past ice and ocean conditions in this area. But one of the tricks to understanding them is finding out exactly how old they are. It's extremely difficult to see whether the changes that we see are happening over hundreds of years, thousands of years, or multiple thousands of years. And, and that is a really important thing to try and narrow down in terms of our understanding. Determining the ages of rocks is, is really important for for um, understanding something about the timing of major climate changes 
in Antarctica and so on, any expedition like this, there are a group of scientists that come together and um, each has um, their own role in, in interpreting uh, those rocks that we recover from, from the seabed around Antarctica. These materials in place within the core could be used to obtain an absolute age for the, the sedimentary layer, the depositional layer within the core. The West Antarctic ice sheet is one of the most dynamic ones. Um, the bed of the sheet is below sea level. If seawater gets below, it can lift the entire ice sheet and help it move out to sea, break up, and contribute to sea level rise. The age model is very important for us and for everybody on the ship as a scientist to interpret all the sediments. What we're most concerned about in our present situation is a collapse of the West Antarctic ice sheet. And what we're looking for is collapses or evidence of collapse in the past through warm periods in the past. We need a model to be able to take the piece of information, the little postage stamp of information that we have and extrapolate it across the ice sheet. And so um, what I can do with my models is take that information and say, well, if we observe this in the Amundsen Sea, what does that mean about the West Antarctic ice sheet in general? We've been really fortunate in that we've collected a relatively continuous high resolution record of what the West Antarctic Ice Sheet has been doing, particularly at times when the climate was different and warmer than today. We chose uh, quite a number of sites on the con so-called continental rise, which is the deep sea just off the continental shelf, and uh, several sites, many sites actually on the continental shelf. And both groups of sites were chosen according to our seismic data that we collected uh, some years ago. Uh, to show us where the best sedimentary sequences had been deposited to allow us to obtain uh, drill records from interesting times of the geological past. And now, of course, therefore, it was really exciting to go here uh, with uh, the Joydas to be able to drill much deeper um, into the seafloor. And I think we now got uh, some very exciting material. It's been a really remarkable set of cores that I think will take lots of work to understand and unravel what it's telling us about the climatic changes, but I think it's there. So I always compare it a little bit with uh, going into space. So uh, uh, it's a hostile environment for, uh, for humans. It is very expensive and the best is when to, to, to join forces. It is a very collaborative uh, spirit and that there is a lot of international collaborations. Antarctic research is quite unique because it's so rare, so expensive to, uh, to reach this region. I'm from North Carolina in a place that's very far from Antarctica and I think it's hard for the topic to be relevant to the day-to-day -day life of students in the United States. Since I've had this experience, I can take it back to them and it'll be an important way that they can think about how scientists understand the present day world, the past, and then what will be happening in the future. Yeah, it's, it's super exciting to get core because it's always changes, right? Um, so you never know what you get. If you um, get 10 meters of new core, there could be like dramatic changes in the lithology. During our time on the Joides Resolution, we have obtained unique archives of the ice and ocean interaction in this region. We obtained a continuous record of uh, sediments that will tell us quite a bit of the detail on the climate changes in West Antarctica and the behavior of the West Antarctic ice sheet. This is a wonderful contribution, a very unique contribution to work on how we can relate the present commitment of CO2 input into the atmosphere and the associated global warming to the natural variations of the past. We're interested to know what the West Antarctic Ice Sheet will do in the future. In some areas the ice sits on rock that is more than a thousand meters below sea level. And this is the place to, to look at this, to investigate uh, if this happened in the past and will happen in the future. This is really exciting. The favorite part of being on the boat is the, uh, is the people, actually. I mean, the icebergs are pretty cool, and the whales are pretty cool, and the ice sheet is pretty cool. But, um, but being part of this international group of scientists that are all motivated by the same thing is a really, um, 
amazing experience and uh, pretty special.